as you've heard from everyone who's talked today, SNAP plays a critical role. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Representative Delora called it a lifeline in providing food for millions of Americans. And we must not reduce this support. Uh, back national survey data showed that about 80% of Americans support either maintaining the present funding or increasing it. And so the fact that Congress is actually discussing how much to cut is, is deeply troublesome. Uh, participants in SNAP are victims of a massive epidemic of obesity and diabetes in the sweeping our country. Uh, as you've already heard, uh, two thirds of many times, two thirds of Americans are overweight and obese, and as been pointed out already today, uh, rates of obesity are higher in low income persons. But even within the low income group, rates are uh, much higher among SNAP participants, and uh, SNAP participants are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Uh, using data from a national survey, the NPIN survey, uh, Dr. Lung, uh, who's here, uh, published a paper uh, earlier this year. And in that paper, we found that uh, SNAP participants had a 60% higher prevalence of obesity compared to non-SNAP non -SNAP participants, where we were looking at only people in the lowest income bracket, below 130% of the poverty level. Also, in that low-income group, SNAP participants had 70% uh, more higher, 70% uh, higher prevalence of elevated blood triglyceride levels, uh, an important risk factor for heart disease, compared to non-SNAP participants. SNAP participants also uh, had a 60% higher prevalence of elevated blood sugar levels and a 60% higher prevalence of metabolic syndrome, which is a precursor to type 2 diabetes. So. Even among low income people, SNAP participants are much worse off metabolically. What do these numbers mean? They mean trouble. They mean increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Uh, more of that, of course, means more kidney failure, more heart disease, more blindness, more loss of limbs, and we've recently shown more dementia. Uh, this also means more cancer. It also means, as you've heard uh, today, a massive increase in medical costs. And uh, looking ahead, we can see even if we didn't increase the prevalence of, even if we arrested the increase in obesity today, the rise in medical costs will go on for three or four decades into the future because that takes that time for the complications to unfold. Uh, these numbers mean premature death, decreased life expectancy, and we're already seeing nationally that in 180 countries around the country, life expectancy is on the decline for the first time. And these are the countries, these are the counties that have among the highest rates of obesity. Why do SNAP participants suffer so severely? Primarily because of the food they eat and the beverages that they drink. We examine diets of SNAP participants again using, using national data. We see on average the servings of sugar sweet beverages, including soda, are about three servings per day. There's uh, large amounts of unhealthy protein, large amounts of refined starch, very few fruits and vegetables, uh, and uh, none of the SNAP participants met uh, the national dietary guidelines. From the last decade of research, we know that this is the diet that promotes obesity, diabetes, heart disease, gouts, gout, and many other diseases. So it's no big surprise that SNAP participants are, are suffering severely from these uh, participants. Now the reasons for the bad diets are of course complex. I don't have time to go into all of that today, but they include uh, availability of food in their communities, cost, knowledge, and other factors as well. However, uh, no matter how we look at the picture, SNAP is a massive failure from a nutritional standpoint. It is a critical problem. Uh, it has been a, a critical factor in reducing food insecurity but it is a disaster otherwise, looking at the food that people eat and the health of SNAP participants. Uh, you heard uh, today that SNAP could be regarded as a conveyor belt that brings unhealthy categories to uh, low-income people. And that's true, I sort of look at it as a funnel that funnels $76 billion of taxpayer money a year to the uh, beverage and soda industry and junk food industry to buy food to feed low-income people that gives them 
diabetes, and then the taxpayer again has to show up and pay the tab for the consequences. The current SNAP program makes no sense, no matter again how you look at it, and must be changed. Not surprisingly, big soda and the junk food industry are pushing back massively, spending huge amounts on a campaign to uh, avoid any change in the present SNAP program. And uh, you heard uh, today some of that, that's uh, from uh, the, that pushback. Uh, but that pushback is really part of a corporate, uh, very heavily funded, orchestrated campaign that's corrupted many of the national so called hunger uh, groups like uh, FRAC. Uh, they take money from the food industry, the food industry sits on the boards, and those uh, so called hunger groups do not speak for the SNAP participants. In fact, we have recently conducted a national survey that included SNAP participants. Uh, I found it actually rather heartwarming that, that so many Americans support SNAP and want to keep the same or increase the amounts uh, spent on SNAP. Uh, and Americans recognize the importance of, of putting out a helping hand to people who are struggling. But yet, they, uh, a wide majority also want to spend that money more, SNAP, more uh, smartly. I have not spent that money on soda, and that even include the majority of SNAP participants themselves. Of course, SNAP participants want to be healthy. They don't want to be uh, suffering uh, and uh, putting themselves at risk of, of these long-term consequences. Uh, SNAP doesn't have to be a failure as a nutrition program. It could address both food insecurity and promote well-being of participants at the same time. The U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, already administers the WIC program that you've heard about briefly that has a very carefully constructed the finest of foods that can be purchased with WIC funds. And that program is well accepted uh, by participants. It's been evaluated and uh, functions very, very well. So in summary, low-income Americans are being swept up in a massive epidemic of obesity and diabetes. This is a huge public health disaster. SNAP today, as it is, is fueling this crisis. Business as usual is not acceptable as people are suffering and dying prematurely. A transformed SNAP can provide both uh, food security and contribute in a major way to the resolution of the obesity epidemic and the control of healthcare costs.